This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. This video is sponsored by Haig Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV to get a 15% discount on damage assessment, CE training, industry certifications, books, and tools at HaigEducation.com. Should you get two-story steep gear? Should you go and spend the money on the equipment and getting the training? And then, um, you know, obviously, um, you're gonna need to practice with it because this is it's fall protection and you gotta know the knots. If you make the wrong knot, you're dead. Um, so should you do that? And the answer is, I think, uh, in spite of the fact, um, like I mentioned before, I have you know a, a great big bag. I can see it right there, full of ropes, uh, webbing, um, ascenders, harnesses, helmets. I mean, every possible thing. Um, and I had it in my truck for seven, eight years, something like that. I only used it maybe a half a dozen times at the most. Um, I still think it is useful to have it um, because it's one of those things, like I mentioned before, where you're, uh, um, I don't wanna be like waiting for somebody else to like help me finish doing the work, right? I don't wanna be waiting for somebody to help me climb on the roof or waiting for a two-story steep team to get around to it in their schedule, right? Where I got my claim just sitting there. I could have closed it three days ago, but I'm waiting. Two stories steep can't be there until four days from now, right? That claim sits there, it's wrecking my cycle time, right? Because it's just day after day after day. It's been inspected or partially inspected because I went out and I'm like, oh, I can't climb that thing, right? I didn't do any claims recon on it and it's just dragging out the, the process. The homeowner's getting, you know, f impatient, right, at the, at the minimum. Um, I don't wanna do that, right? So I wanna be able to access, fully access every single property that I encounter, right? The big part of that is doing claims recon, where before you even, you know, you get all your claims on that, those, that first chunk of uh, claims that you get on a storm, um, I'm looking at every single one of those on satellite imagery and saying, or looking at the street view, like, can I get on that one or is that one huge and cut up? Maybe I just need to order an eagle view on it and then scope it from the top of the ladder, right? I may do that, right? Um, and that's a perfectly, perfectly valid way to do certain, certain kinds of claims. You're not gonna deny things by just looking from the top of the ladder, but if it's a home run, this is a hail damage all over it, you know, and it's, but it's a 12-12 and it's all cut up and it's two and a half stories or whatever, then top of the ladder, I can take some photos, get some, take some, you know, right, circle up stuff with my chalk, take some pictures, take my eagle view and write that thing up. And I may have to take, move my ladder around all four sides, um, but there's no, there's no sense in risking your life um, for a claim. Just, I don't care what anybody, you can comment down there and say, I'm, you know, telling the wrong thing, but it's, your life's worth a lot more than a claim. And you can absolutely scope from the top of the ladder as long as you're paying for it and you're not gonna deny it because denials, that's a whole, you gotta get up on it and do a full complete inspection. Anyway, I digress. So should you get two-story steep gear? Again, I think the answer is yes, knowing that you're probably not gonna use it very often, um, but when you do need it, you can be like, man, I'm so glad I have that, right? So this, I think, Contrary to the drone thing, I think two stories steep um, because it doesn't require any batteries and you just zip it up in the bag and it stays in your truck um, and it's there when you need it. Um, I think it's uh, better to have it not need it than to need it and not have it kind of a situation um, with the caveat that you absolutely 100% have to get trained on it. Um, I wouldn't recommend that anybody go out and just try to like, especially if you've never been rock climbing before, you've never done anything with harnesses and ropes and stuff, um, you don't know any of the knots, just trying to like get on Amazon and just buy some stuff and be like, well, I got it, you know, and then try to figure it out while you're standing there in the homeowner's front yard. You're, you're going to kill yourself <laughs> if you try and do that. Please don't do that. Get trained on it, right? They will show you, and don't buy the gear until you've gone to the training, right? Because they'll have all the gear at the training and they're gonna say, all right, you wanna build your own kit? Hey, look, we have a, a ready-made kit right for you. It's 900 bucks or $1,200 or $600 or whatever. And you just pick it up and walk out the door with it and bada bing, bada boom. It's got everything that you're gonna need to do roof claims, not rock climb, you know, El Capitan or the Empire State Building or whatever, but just to do roof claims. Um, 
everything that she needs, they may have that stuff for you there. Or they'll say, um, well, I'm gonna train you on all this, all this gear so that you're familiar with all of it, and then we're gonna give you a list, and you can take that to REI or to wherever and buy it, or Amazon or whatever. The, the, the places that do rope and harness training, I think are pretty smart about it, and, and they, they will likely either have the gear or have like you know a place that you can buy it easily online, right? I think it's absolutely critical to do that. And the, 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 the other piece to, the, the other caveat to saying, yes, get rope and harness, uh, fall protection gear, is to say that you have to practice. You have to practice with the knots, right? And there's one, probably really only one main knot that you're gonna use all the time, like 100% of the time, and that's the figure of eight knot, right? And there's, a, there's several different ways to make it, but if you make it wrong, if you don't, twist it far enough, or you, you you don't have a backstop on it or whatever, it can undo itself or tighten down so so much you can't get the thing untied if, if you happen to slip and fall and it cranks on it, right? Um, so you have to know the knots and you have to practice the knots. And by knots, the knots, I mean the knot, right? So I figured I might as well just like show you while I'm standing here. The figure eight knot is unique um, and one of the benefits of it, obviously, is that you uh, you can untie it even if it's been under a load, but it is one of a kind knot, right? There's a couple ways to make it. You can make it on a bite, uh, or you can, you know, obviously it looks like an eight, right? Um, you can make this knot here, and then wrap this other side around something and then run it back through, right? Like so, I mean, you can, there's, a, again, a gazillion ways to do it. This is not a knot tying tutorial, but if you don't make your knot, that looks like um, this specifically, right? Um, if it looks like uh, <laughs> this, not a figure eight, okay? This is a, you know, this is gonna tighten down so much and you probably won't be able to get it untied. Um, it may run out, right? And then you could get down to the end of this thing and then to just pull straight through. Um, but you wanna, um, you wanna make a figure eight knot and you wanna practice it, right? To look like that. And my recommendation is to go to the, Go to Walmart and buy yourself some paracord or something like that. Buy just something that's got it's it's got a little bit of weight. You don't have to buy like a climbing rope or whatever, but something and then you cut a six foot piece of it, and then keep it in you know a little a little thing where you keep your TV dinner trays next to the while you're watching TV or watching the news or watching the game, and just pull this thing out and just make knots and just make just make this knot over and over and over and over again, right? Um, because that way, um, when you get out there in the field. Um, then you can make the figure eight knot correctly and safely, and that you're gonna use this to clip into your harness, right? And you clip into your ascender and clip into th th all the things, right? It's gotta look like a figure of eight. Um, Long-winded way of saying that you have to, you know, if you're gonna get rope and harness gear, it's not enough to just like buy it on your own and just throw it in the bag in the back of your truck. Um, you need to get trained on it with good, high quality training for some place that, that specializes in training rope and harness for people climbing roofs, right? Um, Reality Rope Access, I believe is one of them. And I'm sure that there's a couple more out there, but they're kind of the one I always hear about. Some IA firms offer um, rope and harness, right? Like Pilot um, off and on will offer rope and harness training. Um, get the training, right? Then get the gear and then practice, right? Practice putting the, your harness on and off, making sure that you understand how your ascender or your gree gree or whatever it is that you're using, um, how that all stuff, that stuff goes together. You might just loop something over a tree limb and get out there and, and mess around with it and see how this stuff works, right? And there's other safety things that go with it as well, because if you do fall and you find yourself hanging, you can get, you know, if you're like your, your circulation gets cut off in your legs, it can kill you, right? You just, and you, you saved your own life by not dying by falling off, but then you have like a pulmonary embolism or whatever, I'm not sure exactly what happens, but lots of different pieces to it. Um, so it's important to get training, 
then get the gear and then practice with the gear, right? And practice a lot, for often, frequently, right? So then I would even, you live in a bigger city, join a climbing gym and just go once, you know, I mean, it's good exercise. You might as well go once a week or twice a week or whatever. But even if you only went once a month um, and just practiced and did a, you know, got there all rigged up and did set your top rope up and everything, um, and just chit chatting with the people in the in the climbing gym, um, it's going to keep it in your brain fresh, and you're going to have that. You're really going to build that muscle memory to be able to make that knot correctly. And again. Other knots, certainly, but the, the figure of eight, figure eight knot, figure eight on a bite, whatever it is, right? That's the, the number one knot. Um, and you can YouTube it, obviously. So yeah, so the answer is, is yeah, I, I would wanna have two stories steep, and I did, and I used it, but it wasn't, it was rare. Um, plenty, and it's mainly my fault. Um, plenty of situations where I should have, probably, I could think of more than a few, where I should have, tied off, but I was in a rush, right? Because again, it's one of the drawbacks to two-story steep or to fall protection like this is that it takes a little bit of time to set up and there may be a weird situation at the house where there's nothing to tie off to. So you have to figure that whole situation out, right? And there's other gadgets. There's the the hip lock. There's the Ridge, um, Ridge Pro. There's the Goat, which, you know, I've never used one, but I heard people like, they either love it or hate it. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to, to get around on a roof safely um, with fall protection. And I, I, it's important to have it, I think. And it's, but it's more, much more important than that to be trained on it and to get to get good at it right practice on your own house right practice the anchoring right the anchoring is a huge piece if your anchor doesn't hold then it's pointless to be tied off to that because you're just going to fall right off right uh, so yeah that's that's my answer on two stories steep um, look into that stuff but practice with it um, and i would definitely go to a place like reality rope access um, and learn from people that do rough access fall protection training specifically. Um, you know, learning rock climbing and things like that's great, uh, but you're not gonna need to be using like little pythons and you know, f f all kinds of little gadgets just to jam and cracks and stuff like that because you're just gonna tie off, you're basically doing a top rope where you tie off to the tree on the opposite side or your car on the opposite side if it's in the driveway and you're on the back. Um, so, and then of course using hip locks and whatever, there's all kinds of gadgets for it, um, but there's, it takes time to set it up, and that's one of the drawbacks um, is that it's, you know, you might take you an extra hour total, 30 minutes on the front and 30 minutes on the back to set it up and tear it down, um, but it's worth it, right? And if you if you do your good claims recon, you can plan in that extra time instead of just pulling up to the house and be like, oh my gosh, well, I could probably scramble up that valley right there, and I, I can do this without, without pulling the ropes out, right? It's your life we're talking about here, right? So um, get trained. Get the gear, practice. Two stories deep. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.